So I wanted to make a video talking about some of the things I've learned, the wisdom that I've gained over the last few years of being a web developer and a self-taught programmer and learning the code on my own and kind of what I've learned, not anything like specific to code, more general information for people who are learning how to code or considering learning how to code or you know just got their first job as a programmer or web developer or anyone who wants to watch this video. So without further ado, here are 10 things that I've learned over the last four years as a self-taught programmer and web developer. And number one is it's a marathon, not a sprint. You wanna learn as fast as you can so you can get a job. And that can lead to you wanting to cram in as much information as you possibly can. You might think that you just need to learn as fast as possible. And if you learn X amount of things in X amount of time that you're gonna be good to go, your learning doesn't end when you get a job. That's actually when your learning really starts when you have a team of people who are gonna help you, that's when you're really gonna grow as a developer and you're gonna learn in the next few years after you get your first job, you're gonna see exponential growth in your skills. This is long-term learning. So if you feel overwhelmed of the amount of stuff that you're learning now, you're just getting started. You're at the tip of the iceberg. You're barely scratching the surface of all the stuff that you're gonna learn over your career. So take your time, don't rush too much. It's a marathon, not a sprint. All right, so another thing, burnout is a real thing. It happens to a lot of developers. If you start feeling that you just hate what you're doing, you're not gonna wanna do it much longer. So be aware of your mental health, be aware of how you're feeling, be aware of if you're really feeling like you want to learn how to code, if you're just feeling exhausted, like you've just been doing it day in and day out and you haven't taken a break and you haven't done any of your normal hobbies and all you do is eat, sleep, breathe, code, you're probably gonna burn out. So keep that in mind. One thing that I learned that if I'm just working too hard, if I'm just all about code and not thinking about anything else, if I'm not hanging out with my family or doing things that I enjoy outside of coding, I'm probably burning out. And it's happened to me before. It happens to a lot of developers. It's pretty common in this field because you're thinking all the time and you're focusing on problems and you're trying to solve problems and you're trying to come up with solutions for things and you're staring at code all day and you're sitting at a computer and it hurts your neck and it hurts your back. And eventually, if you just do that all the time, you're gonna be miserable, you're gonna burn out. If you take one thing away from this video, that burnout is a real thing and, and just be aware of it. The next thing I'm gonna mention is something that I did a lot when I first got my first job and all the way leading up to my first job, you know, everything I did revolved around code. I mentioned that earlier and all my side projects were code related. Even when I got a job, I would still make code side projects because I, I wanted to get as good as I could and I felt that I had to catch up. I felt that even though I had just got a job based off of my skills and where I was at, I needed to be better. I felt that I wasn't good enough. If you just got your first job, if you're a junior developer, you might feel like everything you do has to revolve around code and you have so much that you need to learn that you need to go home and build side projects. So now all your side projects revolve around code and then you're coding eight hours a day at work and then you're coding eight hours a day at home. Then what? Everything you do, your whole existence, is based off of being a programmer. And that's not healthy. People need to have extracurricular activities outside of work. And while I know that many people enjoy coding so much that they do it all the time, all your side projects don't need to revolve around code. This is something that I've learned. This is why I started this YouTube channel and I'm not doing tutorials because I wanna do something different that's not what I do every day. It's gonna lead you to burning out like I mentioned before and it's just not something that you wanna do and it's something that I learned over the last few years. Here's another thing I learned over the last few years. There's going to be times when you're gonna to have to do things that you don't agree with because a client or business decides that's what they wanna do. Programmers should have control over what happens and what features get released. Oftentimes that's not the case and business is gonna get their way. So your job is to find the best solution that works for business and for your code base on how to implement a feature or whatever it may be that business wants and your team really doesn't agree with. Because trust me, it will happen. It, I've seen it happen. In the freelance world, freelance clients ask for certain things that are usually just bad practice on websites. Well, I don't think you really want to do that. And they're like, no, I must have this. 
all right, well, then you, you get what you want. That's fine because you're paying me. And at the end of the day, it's not my website and I don't care. The same goes for a corporate code base. If you work for a company, don't get too attached to the code. It's not your code. Make sure that you write plenty of documentation, that you read documentation. Over the last few years, I don't know how many times the answer I was looking for was in the documentation and easy to find, but I chose to go through other methods of finding the answer like Stack Overflow or just searching around different blog posts and different videos. And really, if I would have just checked the documentation, I probably would have figured it out a lot faster. So start with the documentation and document as much as you can. And writing good documentation makes you a better developer in the long run because you have to explain how something that you built works and that makes you understand it better. So just make sure that you're reading documentation and you're writing documentation. If there's one thing that I've learned over the last few years, documentation is just super important and it's something that will really make you a better developer. All right, one thing that I've struggled with that I think almost every developer struggles with at some point in time is imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome never totally goes away, but it does get better with time. And the more you learn, the more confident you'll feel and the better you'll get at your job and the better of a programmer you become. And over time, imposter syndrome isn't as bad, but man, early on when I was just getting started, when I got my first job and I actually like made it, you know, I made it. I got my first real job and I was writing code on a team and then it hit me. Oh man, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't belong here. Why did they hire me? And I had to learn everything that I didn't know that was totally new to me and things that I thought that I knew pretty well. I realized that I didn't know at all and I sucked and that I was gonna be a failure and they were gonna fire me in a few months and all these things. And that was pretty much like my first week. That was the imposter syndrome. And that, it gradually got better and better. I just wanna share that because I learned over the years that, okay, this is something that you just learned to deal with in this job. Here's one more thing. A toxic work environment is probably never gonna get any better. Get out while the getting's good and don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait until you're burnt out. Don't wait until you just rage quit and slam your laptop on the table and flip off your boss and storm out of the room because that might happen. I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it could happen. It almost happened to me. But don't don't let that happen. If if you realize that there's a lot of things where you're working at that just you don't, you don't like, it's not making you happy, you're realizing that you don't get treated the way you wanna be treated, your team doesn't get treated the way that they, they should be getting treated, you're underpaid, you're overworked, your managers treat you like shit. Your your boss is a jerk, all those things, they're probably never gonna change. And you should probably get out while you can and while you have a job, start looking, rather than doing something silly or maybe ending up in a bad situation and not being able to find a new job on your own terms. And this leads me into my next thing is know your worth. Know your value, know what you should be getting paid. You know, Don't get too hung up on, I don't have a degree, I don't have this, I don't have that. Just focus on what you do have. Focus on what you can bring to the table. Look at how in demand those skills are. Look at how you can make your skills better and just realize how valuable you are as an asset to a company. This is something that that got me pretty good early on after a few years. I felt that maybe I just, I wasn't as good as I thought I was. I felt that maybe I hadn't grown as much as I should have. I felt that my skills weren't that good and I, I didn't know what value that I really brought until I had to think about it and and ask people that I worked with, you know, what what are some of my highlights? What, what are some of the things that I'm really good at? What are some of the things that stand out in me as a programmer, as an employee? I kind of need a reassurance. I wasn't very confident in my skills. I, again, self-taught. I only did it for a few years and you don't know how much value you can bring to a company. But trust me, if you've been doing this professionally for two years, you're you're worth more than you think you are. And I'm telling you this because um, I, I had to figure that out for myself and it worked out for me. I ended up getting the salary that I was hoping for in my next job and I was, I was really happy with the way things worked out for me and I'm making more money now than I ever thought that I would make in my entire life because I never had goals for a career until I decided to learn how to code. 
All right, this is a big one for front-end web developers. When I was learning how to code, I wanted to learn React. I was learning React. I was teaching myself a little bit. I was going to meetups for React. I was trying to apply for React jobs, but I didn't get a React job. At my first job, many of us liked working in React, but we didn't have React as a front-end framework. And after a while, a lot of us pushed to start using React, and one team started using React on the app that they were building, and eventually the team that I worked on started using React on the websites. That wasn't until I had been at that job for almost a year and a half. I spent a lot of time learning React when I was learning how to code. Then when I finally got to use React at work, I only used it for a few months until I found another job and I was applying for React jobs and I ended up getting an Angular job. I still don't work in React. I haven't touched React in a long time. You should pick a framework and stick with it. That's important. I mentioned that in other videos, but you shouldn't get so hung up on what framework it is and really at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Pick one that you like or honestly pick one that's popular in your area, do some job searches and see, see what employers are looking for and see what framework would benefit you the most to learn. I feel like this one and imposter syndrome really go hand in hand because I've noticed a lot of the times when I feel imposter syndrome, this has a lot to do with it. And it's that you're only going to be as good as your skills allow you to be. And in time, as long as you work towards getting better and improving as a programmer, then you're fine. But don't compare yourself to developers of a higher skill set than you because you're only going to be as good as you are. When you get 10x by a senior level developer, it's not because he's smarter than you. It's not because you're dumb and you don't know what you're doing. Well, it, it, it does have to do with you don't know what you're doing, but it's not because you're dumb. It's just because they have more experience than you and they've been doing it for 10 years and this is your second week and you're not going to understand stuff or this is your second year and they've been doing it for 10 years. Think about that. That's a big difference. You don't, you just don't have the same time put into this. And when you get to that time, as long as you're learning as you go and you make efforts to improve and you don't get stagnant and you keep improving over time and you become a better developer, then you're fine. But don't don't get too stressed out if you feel like you get stuck and you feel like you're dumb because, you know, if you've only been doing this for a short amount of time, everyone's going to be better than you. But eventually you'll have a lot of experience under your belt and you're going to come across some junior developer who has no idea what they're doing and you're going to 10x them and they're going to call you a genius and they're just going to look at you with these big googly eyes and think that you're just this this big mysterious being that just solved all their problems in a few seconds. And I've been on both sides of that and I know what it feels like from both sides. When I didn't know what I was doing and someone helped me out, it did feel like they knew everything. And when I helped someone out and I figured it out, it still felt like I really didn't know anything. I had to troubleshoot the problem. I had to figure it out just my experience and the amount of time that I've done it and seen similar problems before I had a better understanding of what was going on. And that's all it was. I, it was just experience and time. So keep that in mind. I am an average programmer at best, but I'm a programmer nonetheless. I get paid to write code and I have a really good job that makes me really good money and I'm really happy right now. And I wanna encourage other people who might be thinking about learning how to code because it was truly life-changing for me and I wanted to share some of my experience over the last few years of being a programmer and a web developer and teaching myself how to code and just things that I feel might help someone out there. And if it helps you, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.